Well, hello YouTube and welcome back to the all new Channel 2012. Here's something you don't necessarily get to see every day. Over the last week I was able to acquire a couple Apple Power Mac G5 computers from a local thrift shop for not too much money. And today we're going to be taking a closer look at them. We're going to be doing a quick tour, maybe even a little bit of a review. We'll also be doing a RAM and hard drive installation as well as operating system installation. This will be a first time thing for me so I'll be learning a thing or two here as well. But we'll be taking a closer look at this computer here in today's video. Apple sold the Power Mac G5 from I believe the year 2003 to 2006 as their uh, professional uh, computer line and these ran with either single or dual uh, PowerPC IBM G5 processors. I got this one at a local computer thrift shop. As you can see here it's in uh, rather rough shape but this one isn't terrible. Let's do a quick hardware tour. As you can see it's a, it's a pretty simple rectangular design with handles on the top and the bottom. On the back you have expansion slots, video card, I don't remember exactly what the video card is, although I believe we will learn during the setup process. We got some holes for the fans, you got port for a wireless antenna, Bluetooth antenna, optical audio in and out, uh, just standard 3.5mm stereo out, audio in, a couple USB ports, a couple Firewire ports, an Ethernet port, and a phone jack, and then there's a hole from the power supply down there. On the front here we have a cover for the optical drive, as well as power light, a power key, a headphone jack, USB port, and a Firewire port. to the inside of the computer. Top here of course we got our DVD drive, DVD write drive, got your hard drive bays where we have drive. Here we actually have a speaker, there's a fan, I believe there's a might be a Bluetooth card back there. We also have over here a video card, again I forgot which kind it is, we got a few expansion ports. And over here, we have our IBM PowerPC G5 processors. Now for the RAM installation, we're just going to pull these fans out. They're kind of plugged in, but after they're disengaged, they'll just come right out. They kind of slide in with this little thing here. After this particular one just takes uh, DDR1 RAM, so I'm going to go ahead and install some of that here real quick. Interesting enough. If you don't have that plastic panel on, the computer will go nuts. It'll put a little red light on in there and ramp the speeds up to hurricane force, which is something you really don't want to hear. For the hard drive installation, you're actually provided with screws, and you may not even realize it. These four that are sticking here are actually for you to remove so that you can put them in your hard drive and slide it in there, which I'll show you here in just a sec. Those just attach into the holes on the sides of the hard drives like this. All right, so to install the hard drive, uh, there's actually two slots in there. And yours is most likely occupied, but since I bought this without a hard drive, it is empty. What's interesting about these cables on top is that even though they appear to be upside down, they're actually inverted cables so that you can actually put the hard drive on the top and right side up as well as the one on the bottom. And then to insert it in the slot on the top, you want to line up the screws you inserted with the middle slot, not the top one, and you'll see why in a second here. See there, I'm lining up that screw with the middle 
section on both sides. And as I slide it in, it actually rides a little bit of a coaster in there. And then the back screws end up lining up with that top one. After you have those attached, you can also go over here and flip the little thingy down to cover the drive so that it doesn't slide out in case of an earthquake. Now that we have those installed, I'm going to put the side panels back on and then we're going to go over what needs to be done to install the operating system on this machine. So here's what you need to install the operating system. First, a little background. PowerMag G5 runs the PowerPC G5 processors, which means that it will only run uh, one of two operating systems, uh, OS X 10.5.8, which is the newest version they made compatible with the PowerPC machines, or Ubuntu. For this demonstration, because I plan on only reselling this particular computer, I want to keep the other one. I'm just going to be uh, installing OS X 10.5.8 clean on this machine. Now the way to do that uh, isn't as straightforward as you might think. The DVD that's here in the install drive is for OS X 10.4, which is the only one you can actually really get a DVD installer for. However, booting from the 10.4 DVD will give us access to a tool that allows us to install DMG image files onto the hard drive. That's where some form of external storage that's 4 gigabytes or larger comes in. OS X 10.5.8 comes in a DMG file which can't be burned to a DVD. It has to be on a USB stick or a hard drive formatted in either the Apple HFS Plus format or FAT32. And even FAT32 I've had some problems with doing this in the past. So all you really need, in a nutshell, if you want to install OS X 10.5.8 on your G5, is the OS X 10.4 install DVD, which I'm sure there's a link to in the description, and the OS X 10.5.8 DMG file, which is also probably linked to down there. Quick note, if you're having trouble getting the DVD drive open, it's not just you. There really is no eject button. What you have to do uh, to put disks in before you start the computer or before the operating system is installed, the only real way to open the DVD drive that I know of is prying this down with your fingers and sticking a paper clip into the emergency hole there on the side, maybe in a different location depending on what DVD drive your computer has. In case you haven't discovered by this point, this computer is lacking uh, legacy ports, so if you are using a VGA monitor you'll need a DVI adapter You'll also need a USB mouse and keyboard, which I have connected up front here already. So let's go ahead and start it up. Watch for a gray screen here and shortly after the Apple logo. Now it's booting from the DVD drive, so it may take a little bit of time to start up here. Just give it a second. If you're getting hung up before this, or if you already have an OS installed, remember that you do need to hold down the C key on the keyboard to boot from the DVD drive. And here we go. It'll start up to this screen, and uh, you just choose your favorite language there, and then click the advance button. And from here, common sense would tell you to step through the installation procedure, but that's the installation procedure for 10.4. We want to go up here to Utilities, click on Disk Utility. This is the part where you'll find out if your source disk that you put the image on is compatible uh, with OS X here. As you can see here, I have my image on this hard drive up here. 
So what we're going to want to do is go to the Restore tab on the hard drive that you want to install OS X 10.5.8 on and go over here to the Restore tab. Next you're going to look down here for Source. You want to click Image. And then choose your image from the list here. And then you just follow the instructions here where it says drag a disk here to restore onto it. That is your destination disk. In my case, I actually have the image on the destination disk, which is okay. It will let you do that. You just drag it there, you see the little plus icon, and you let go. In this case, I won't be clicking the erase destination button. This lets me keep any of the stuff that was on there before, which in this case is just that restore file and then we will click restore. It will ask me to confirm and then I click OK. And Then the progress bar will show up down here. This will take a few minutes. I'll post uh, in the video description or in the video exactly how long this takes. And here we are with the uh, restore all done. As you can see, it takes about uh, 10 gigabytes after it's been unzipped, and the process took about 15 minutes on that drive. The last step before you're all done is to exit the disk utility. It'll take you back out here, but then you're going to click the exit button on here as well. Then it's going to give you this little thing up here that you should pay attention to. It says, are you sure you want to quit the installer? What you want to do is click the startup disk option from within there. Give it a second to load. And then choose the hard drive that you just restored to and then click restart. Then it's going to ask you to confirm the restart. Click it and give it a few seconds. Now because this is a clean install, it may hang on this screen for a little longer than usual, but that's normal. It'll also uh, actually find all the drivers and reset the resolution uh, to your monitor's uh, correct setting, usually by itself, depending on your monitor. And then it's going to take us through the uh, first run setup wizard here. But before it does that, it will probably play the uh, Welcome to OS X uh, introduction video. wizard it will take you back here to the desktop and this is what it looks like uh, this is the default clean install desktop of OS X 
if at this point you're wondering uh, how to open the DVD drive still because your installed DVD is still in the drive don't get out your paper clips just yet there is a way to do it here within the software you just need to go up there to the top of the screen click that little eject button and then just click eject the DVD and there it is and with that the system should now be all set up and ready to run with your new RAM and your new hard drive if you want to see your system information and specifications you can click up in the corner on that little app button click about this Mac and it'll give you some basic stuff like your processors and your memory and you can go under here to more info to open up the system profiler and it'll give you more information than you ever wanted to know. Bear in mind that because it's a power PC system, your software selection is somewhat limited, but that's not to say that there's nothing there. Uh, for internet browsers, there's always a uh, 10.4 Fox or Aurora for power PC. And there's also an older version of Flash Player as well, and a tweak that doesn't update Flash Player but makes it appear to be the latest version and will allow you to use uh, Flash Player on most any website, including YouTube. There's also a dedicated YouTube application that makes YouTube videos a little smoother at higher resolutions. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thanks for joining us. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments section. A quick note on comments, uh, and this applies to both my channel and other channels. I noticed that sometimes uh, comments get erroneously marked as spam, and in that case they don't show up in my inbox. And even when they're not marked as spam, they don't always show up in my inbox anyway. So if you left a comment directed at me, and I haven't specifically responded to it, uh, leave a personal message. With that said, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.